Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So coming to you from an absolutely wild and woolly Hawaii. <laughs> I think the entire country of the United States is just having a day right now. So anyway, sorry to everybody else who's suffering through a lot of cold. It's clearly not that cold here, but it is super windy. Anyway, I wanted to talk today a little bit more about branding and why Elon Musk having this affair, I guess, with Twitter is such an important thing and why it might actually be something where it really is more important than Elon Musk is suggesting. Elon has suggested over and over again that what is going on here is just a no big deal, right? He's like, oh, no worries. I'm, I've got this you know, Twitter thing. I've, I've had multiple companies before. It's been no big deal. But I think that there's a couple of matters going on here. Number one is that he wasn't really as famous before. If you think back the last time, I know he started Neuralink and OpenAI and stuff, but he really didn't have an awful lot to do with them. But if you think back to the last time he started, you know, a big company like SpaceX or Tesla, it was 2002-ish. And he was very, very, you know, he was famous-ish, but not like Elon Musk famous these days. So that's one you know, piece of the pie here, is that this is a very, very different Elon Musk, a very different time period. The second part of this is that this is a social media company. So you know, in the past, Elon Musk has created technology companies first, and yeah, social media companies are ultimately tech companies, but they're also really, really different. They're, the way that people interact with them, the way that people think about them is much more about communication with each other rather than the technology. So if you think back to the early days of SpaceX and Tesla, for example, you know, everybody says Tesla's not a car company. That's very true. But in 2007, 2008, 2009, at those times, even up into the 20 teens, Tesla was very much a car company. So, you know, you've got that going on. That was a technology company. SpaceX clearly, they've got Starlink now, which is much more of a social media communications platform. But in the early days of, of, of uh, SpaceX, it was very, very much a, a technology company, right? It was trying to create rockets that would go into orbit and uh, very close to going out of business on both of those fronts. So it looks like Elon Musk, you know, I get this feeling that he feels like, he may or may not be, but he feels like he's very close to going bankrupt or at least having Twitter go bankrupt. I mean, he's got other funding sources, but <clears throat> he is very close to, uh, he's feeling like he's very close to Twitter going bankrupt, which puts him back into the same state that he was in the early 2000s or later, you know, 2008, 2009, et cetera, when both SpaceX and Tesla were in very, very serious danger of going bankrupt. But again, the situation is very different right now because there's, you know, the fact that Tesla is a publicly traded company and the fact that there's a lot of fund managers, including Ross Gerber, who is really upset right now, quite clearly. He's, you know, taking Elon Musk to task publicly on Twitter, of all things. But anyway, he's, you know, he's saying to Elon Musk, you've got to fix this problem. You've got to go back to Tesla or you've got to announce somebody who's going to take over for you. So those are kind of the two options that Ross Gerber, and he's kind of leading the charge on this. He's been very adamant about this. Um, again, you know, I think for us longer term shareholders in Tesla, it's, it's up and down. It really sucks that it's lost so much value. And on paper, my portfolio has lost a ton of value, but it doesn't ultimately matter because I'm not really planning on selling the stock until the 2030s sometime. So, you know, so I think to, much more to the point to people who are fund managers who actually have to like look at quarterly profits like every three months or so. This really matters a lot. This is something that is a huge deal to them and they're getting very, very upset about it. So, you know, you've got a lot of problems going on with this. Now, Elon Musk is saying in his defense that this is not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what's going on with Tesla. I'll make it up to you. But I think there are some reasonable arguments to be made against that. And the main one is that brand actually matters, right? Elon talks about how it's not that big of a deal and how the, the Tesla will sell every car it makes. And there's a lot of defenders of Tesla that say Tesla will sell every car it makes. But all of a sudden you're starting to see evidence with kind of a perfect storm going on in both China and the US. 
that Tesla is in danger of not selling every car they make. So in the United States, of course, you've got the, the, uh, the, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is coming online in January, which means that anybody who's paying attention is thinking to themselves, I don't really want to take delivery of this vehicle in December, except for people who are making like too much money and wouldn't count. But anyway, most people are saying like, I'm going to delay till January to take delivery of my vehicle. So therefore you've suddenly got this, you know, a, a, a reduction in demand. And you've seen Tesla really, really reduce the price and offer 10,000 supercharging miles and all sorts of things that they're not used to doing. They haven't done this in a while. So, and of course we got airplane, oh, military jets behind us too, Pearl Harbor. So anyway, by the way, Pearl Harbor is very uh, somber, but really, really worth visiting. So anyway, just throw that in there. We went there yesterday. But, uh, but I think that, you know, Elon talking about how brand isn't that big a deal and people defending Elon Musk and saying brand isn't that big a deal are being a little bit naive. Um, <clears throat> brand, you know, if you look at any company, it doesn't really matter what company it is. It takes years to develop a high quality brand that's aspirational. And Tesla has been right at the top of that, right? You're talking about like Apple and maybe in the search engine field, Google, but you know, Android's never been quite that kind of brand loyalty thing. But Tesla has been right up there in terms of like the top aspirational brands. And it feels like it's fallen off the cliff a little bit. And that's very directly because of the fact that people are worried about Elon Musk's focus in addition to the fact that Elon Musk has sold a ton of stock, which again, there's a reason for him to do this. So whatever, <clears throat> that's, that's his choice to do what he wants to with his stock. But he is a very, very public figure and him selling billions of dollars worth of stock automatically is going to depress demand, which is going to make the prices go down, which concerns people. But also in general, when you see the CEO of a company sell a bunch of stock, you start to worry about the condition of that company. And you're like, uh oh, are they just cashing in so they can walk away now? I know that's not the case with Elon Musk, but you have to think about the fact that there's an emotional content aspect to the way that people deal with stocks and it's not rational. It shouldn't be that way, right? Stock should be a much more logical thing. You should, in, you should look at a company, you should look at its fundamentals. And I'm not a stock inve investment planner or anything, so please, this is just my own ramblings. <laughs> Don't take this as advice. But you know, and you should look at the, the fundamentals of the company, you should figure out what it's doing, and that's what you should decide on, not emotion. But a lot of people base things on emotion. And the big problem is that when you have a brand that's as aspirational and you have a company that was growing as quickly as Tesla and then suddenly the brakes are put on in China and in the United States and potentially in other markets. And China, by the way, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they uh, are in a pretty severe economic recession. They've got these lockdowns that keep happening and not happening. So again, you've got a perfect storm over there of people not being as interested. And of course, you've got Chinese EV companies that are starting to produce some real competition to Tesla, which hasn't produced a new vehicle model in years since the Model Y. Uh, I guess the Model S Plaid and Model X Plaid have come out. Those are refreshes, but not a brand new car since the Model Y. And that's been a few years now. So, you know, you've got some problems. I personally feel like the fundamentals are super strong. Tesla's gonna go th come through this. A lot of this is very temporary and it will work its way through. But the brand tarnishing is the one piece of this puzzle that could really, really go south. And that would be very unfortunate. It takes so little time to damage a brand and it takes so much time to build a brand. So you've got a company that's been in existence basically 20 years, was building its brand, was building its brand, was finally in you know, 2020, 2021, the car company, the car that everybody wanted to buy, the stock that everybody wanted to buy, and now all of a sudden, both of those are not as much the case anymore. Now the car, <clears throat> the fact that people aren't wanting to buy the car as much right now is, is again, I think a relatively temporary thing. And hopefully that will come back relatively quickly. But Tesla, the brand is no longer, you know, the honeymoon is over, I guess might be the way to put that. And it's going to take years, if not a decade to recoup the brand. So, you know, Elon Musk playing around with Twitter and it being a social media company and him become, becoming very political on Twitter and of course drawing the ire of a huge number of people who are very powerful. 
uh, not just you know people like Ross Gerber who are investors and Gary Black of course and others but also politicians politicians are really upset with him so all of these things are really really bad potentials for Elon Musk these are and for Tesla and he has really got to think about this now he did do a poll and he said do you want me to step down at Twitter? I think with the idea that he would go back to spending most of his time with Tesla and some at SpaceX. And, but, and everybody said 57% to 43%. <laughs> it's really, really loud out here. Anyway, 57% to 43% said, yes, you should step down. But then Elon Musk has been very coy about the whole thing. <laughs> Ambulance. So Elon's been very coy about this ever since the poll came out and what we've heard is this kind of almost like a cry for help. He said, uh, I don't see anybody who is capable of making this happen and is willing to do it. So there is no successor. So he's kind of saying, look, we have, I, we have the need. He's finally, I think, realized the fact that somebody else needs to take over at Twitter so he can really go back and focus, even if it's just optics, even if it's not something that matters as much from a practical standpoint it really matters from an optics standpoint and so he needs to go back and show that he is hundred percent committed to Tesla and to SpaceX <laughs> or let's say 70 30 percent committed and you know he's he's got other companies too he's got Neuralink and Boring Company which have really fallen off the radar because of how busy he is so even if it's just an optics thing Elon Musk desperately needs to back off of Twitter and let somebody else take care of it and, and if it goes bankrupt, I think he needs to consider the fact that maybe he just draws the line somewhere. I mean, Ross Gerber, Elon asked Ross, what do you want me to do? <laughs> he said, you know, because Ross was like, this is not going well. And Elon said, what do you want me to do? And Ross said, I, you need a social media or a, 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 a PR, basically, a PR wing. I very much agree with Ross. A lot of people strongly disagree that Tesla doesn't need that. I think now Tesla does. I think maybe a year ago you could have argued that they didn't, but now they desperately need a, a, a PR department. He also said that, you know, that, that Elon needs to show that he's committed to Tesla, which means that he needs to be back in charge or he needs to, uh, uh, you know, declare or present a succession plan at Tesla if he's not going to do it at Twitter. So one way or the other, he needs to, you know, get off, <laughs> he needs to get off the fence. He needs to make a decision about this. And I think he may feel very, very stuck right now. I think Twitter is a much harder nut to crack than he expected. In the middle of a recession, you know, advertising rates are pretty crappy. So I'm sure that Twitter is losing a ridiculous amount of money right now. And they're having to lower prices on Tesla vehicles, which means that Tesla vehicles are suddenly not as profitable as they were. And the quarter four results are probably going to be depressed. Sales will probably be good, but the profit margins are going to be significantly lower because of all of these cuts that they've had to make. So this is, you know, this is not looking good for him. And he's lost a huge amount of money because he's dumped a huge amount into Twitter. And at this point, who knows exactly what Twitter is worth? It might be worth nothing. So my hope is that Twitter will come through this, that he's being a little bit, you know, paranoid, I guess, which isn't a bad thing to be as a CEO of multiple companies. The, you know, the paranoid survive in a lot of senses. But I think it's, it's desperately important for him to either, you know, declare a successor at, at Twitter or at Tesla. I prefer if he declares somebody, if he comes up with a succession plan at Twitter and comes up with a timeline for that, whether it's three months or five months or six months, he needs to come up with a timeline and he needs to say, this is what's gonna happen. This is the person who's gonna take over. They're gonna start in and maybe, you know, seesaw the whole thing away from me and then I'll drop it and become like chairman of the board or something instead. So I think it's very important that he does something like this because what's happening right now is that Tesla's brand is being damaged. And that's something that is, you know, not as much going to have an effect in the next three to six months or year because there's enough people in the pipeline who want Teslas right now that I don't think that's going to be a problem. But it's going to be a significant issue going forward because remember, we're looking at that S curve and the bottom of the S curve where the early adopters are, we're starting to turn from that to the more mainstream adopters. Those people pay a lot of attention to advertising, to brand reputation, and word of mouth, things like that. So word of mouth is still gonna be really good, 
but brand recognition and advertising are both severely lacking at Tesla right now. So, you know, I, I hate to say this, I really am a big fan of Tesla, but I really think that Elon Musk needs very, very urgently to get away from Twitter so that he can at least optically focus. I mean, it doesn't even matter if he's actually like for real pulling the strings in charge of Twitter. If he can just, you know, say this is the person who's now CEO and I'm chairman of the board, but behind the scenes, he's actually still <coughs> very much in charge of Twitter. It's mostly for the optics. People need to go like, oh, he's in Austin most of the time. He's working at Tesla and he's spending some time at SpaceX. SpaceX is still a private company, so it doesn't matter as much. And they're really firing on all cylinders. <laughs> but anyway, it, I think for Tesla in particular, whether or not he's still pulling the strings at Twitter, he needs to show that he's not. It needs to be optically like he's not. It's very important. And Tesla's brand is being tarnished right now. And if, if he doesn't pull that out of the fire and really start to help its brand, and I think part of that, honestly, is going to be advertising or doing some sort of promotional work again. If he doesn't do that, things are going to get worse at Tesla. So anyway, that's what I've got to say about that. Like I said, I wanted to do, I talked about this before I left for the trip and said that I wanted to do kind of a, a more thought, thoughtful one. Sorry, it's as windy as it has been, but at least you get to see the ocean behind me. But anyway, uh, I'd love to know what you have to, say, to think about this. I'd love to know what you have to say about this. Let me know in the comments. And whether you strongly disagree with me, that's fine. This is just my opinion, obviously. But do let me know what you think. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please do like it and consider subscribing. I'll be back home in a few more days. Then things will be back in my studio and back to normal. So anyway, in the meantime, everybody can be jealous of the fact that even though it's super windy, it's very nice and warm right now. So I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.